quorum, and we've been very careful not to call this a hearing. Um, we had suggested that the purpose, of course, was to seek commentary on the several pieces of legislation that are currently before um, before you today, and the the objective here is is twofold. One to ensure our advocates and to the public the efforts that we are putting forward in the Democratic Conference to ensure that we look at domestic violence issues and keep it at the forefront of our agenda. And, and the second certainly is to solicit your support in, in talking with your legislators um, that, re that represent you if they're not here on this on this podium or haven't been here today, but certainly who may be somewhat reluctant because they don't understand the bill well. Because one of the things that needs to happen for all of us is that we need to be educated about these issues. It's one thing for us to pass bills, but to really understand the impact on the lives of the people that are affected is terribly important to the success of the work that we do. And so part of what we try to do is conduct either hearings or forums to allow the public to share with us um, their ideas and their concerns about some of the bills that we propose. I also um, suggested that I would read uh, into the record a couple of testimonies by people who were not able to attend. And I felt that it was very important that I read um, these two particularly because one is from Marcy Khan, who is um, Justice of the Supreme Court of the First Judicial District. And I'd, I'd like to just quickly read her um, statement into the record. Um, I thank Senator Hassel Thompson and, Senator, and Assemblyman Gary Pretlow for their presenting this public forum to discuss important legislation addressing the serious issue of domestic violence in our state and affording me the opportunity to submit this written statement in support of the Domestic Violence Survivors Act, Senate 5436 and Assembly 7874, better known as SJA, Survivors Justice Act. I write from the perspective of a judge and former prosecutor in the state criminal courts for more than 25 years. Although society's awareness of the cascade of problems caused by domestic violence has increased during the t that time, our options for addressing its various facets in a manner that promotes justice has lagged behind. Enactment of SJA would offer a more humane sentencing structure for certain survivors of, a domestic, of domestic abuse by creating the opportunity in a narrow class of cases for judges to exercise their discretion to effect a just result in cases where substantial physical, sexual, or psychological abuse from the intimate partner or family member is a significant contributing factor in the commission of the crime and imposition of a sentence within the statutory range would produce an unduly harsh result. As such, the bill would provide the criminal justice system with a more nuanced sentencing range, allowing the sentencing judge to fashion a punishment befitting the particular offender before the court. In no case would the bill permit the vacation of the judgment of conviction. The offender's culpability would not be ignored, but in appropriate cases, she or he would have the opportunity to demonstrate worthiness for the court's discretionary mitigation of the established sentence for the crime. In, 19, in 1998, the legislature endeavored to address this issue by establishing a domestic violence exception to the 1998 Sentencing Reform Act, known as Jenner's Law. That provision, codified in penal law, permits judges to grant indeterminate sentences to survivors convicted of certain homicide or assault crimes against their abusers, rather than the statutorily mandated determinant terms. Although the intentions of its drafters was commendable in practice, this penal law has fallen short of fulfilling its promise. The existing exclusion is very narrowly drawn, 
omitting a range of crimes which victims of abuse have been known to commit and which have been captured by SJA. It also offers sentencing ranges which are not meaningfully reduced. An individual could receive a longer indeterminate maximum term under the exclusion than under the determinate sentencing scheme. Prison law also fails entirely to account for crimes committed by abuse survivors at the behest of, not against, their abusers, which omits an important category of offense. Indeed, victims of abuse may not fully appreciate or be able to invoke a duress defense in such circumstances due to their victimization. The SJA would allow and enable the court to take account of such circumstances and fashioning appropriate sentencing without permitting the individual to escape responsibility for the committed crime. As such, the bill would equip judges to effect justice for all parties in such cases, a manner not currently available to them. In, in, SJA, the SJA would affect a relatively small number of offenders. It is estimated that fewer than 175 women would potentially be eligible for resentencing under the bill. Further, it is estimated that no more than 243 women per year would be potentially eligible for alternate sentencing under the bill. Although these estimates do not include male applicants, experience teaches that given the disparate impact of domestic violence on women, it is likely that the vast majority of applicants would still be female. In any case, the number of individuals eligible to seek resentencing or alternating sentencing will be relatively small and far fewer than their counterparts under the drug law reforms. The judge goes on to, um, to state some intricate details of law, but the important things are here that further circumscribing the pool of eligible defendants is requirements that applicants meet a very high standard of proof in order to be eligible for consideration for alternative sentencing or resentencing under SJA. The applicant would have to satisfy a strict three-part test demonstrating, number one, that he or she, at the time of the offense, the victim of domestic violence and subjected to substantial physical, sexual, or psychological abuse inflicted by a spouse, intimate partner, or relative by blood or marriage and that the abuse was significant, was a significant contributing factor in the commission of the crime and that the imposition of a sentence within the statutory range would be unduly harsh. Failure to satisfy all aspects of the test would render the applicant ineligible for relief. In contrast to the procedures under the Drug Law Resentencing Act, there would be no presumption under SJA that an eligible applicant ought to be resentenced. And here the offender would bear the burden of persuading the court of her or his worthiness of relief. I read this into, um, into the record primarily because we've heard from advocates and those who have been survivors but I wanted to ensure um, for the benefit of my colleagues that they understand the people who are testifying are also from all, from all aspects that would be impacted by, um, by the Survivors Justice Act. And so that the judge says that the judge would merely be provided with the discretion to exercise leniency in those cases he or she deem worthy of receiving it. In some passage of the Domestic Survivors Act, Domestic Violence Survivors Act would provide judges with the necessary discretion uh, to promote justice for a limited number of survivors of domestic abuse for whom the court should be able to fashion an appropriate sentence outside of the regulatory the regular statutory scheme without allowing them to avoid responsibilities for their crime. I urge the legislature to give early attention to the passage of this important measure. 
Today, um, I want again to thank all of you who have brought um, your testimony before this panel. And certainly, I want to doubly commend those who were brave enough to tell their stories to the public. Um, each time they do, um, they cannot always know the kind of backlash that they may possibly experience. And so that I consider them to be um, quite courageous and commend them and thank them for doing what was necessary to help us to move the process of this legislation. This forum is now concluded. Thank you.